Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I'm excited to discuss a new product revision release that I've been working on for quite some time. I've had so many past clients um, request this as well as some of my normal DIY crowd. Uh, everybody's been really looking forward to it. Of course, it's taken me a little more time to get around to. Uh, especially this year with what's been what's been actually going on. Um, what you see before you is my standard Rev2 chassis. From the front, it doesn't look like there's really been anything done to it. Um, in this configuration, just so everybody's on the same page, just like my previous uh, Rev2 chassis, the dimensions of the unit is 12 inches long by 12 inches wide by 4 inches high. I get that question a lot. So again, we know our dimensions haven't changed. Front of the unit looks stock. When we rotate her, is where things get interesting. This chassis has been fully machined, and I consider this to be the master edition chassis because it does come with all of the options. And when I say all of the options, here is the GX16 three pin connectors. These are aviation screw lock connectors. Um, this chassis will include the female versions that plug directly into these. They only can go in one way, so you cannot screw anything up. Um, these, this chassis was designed, once again, for the DIY crowd who wants to save money, and a lot of money, because again, um, doing this is very labor intensive as far as the hookups, but rest assured, when you utilize these type of connections, you do follow the soldering principles that I've discussed in previous videos, your results will be amazing. Um, you can see here that the chassis connectors are all mounted very close proximity to the drive to mitigate as much EMI as possible. Why I'm using three pin GX16 connectors for switch allocation. Now when I say switches, remember touch plate or a touch plate is also a switch. That's really all it is, okay? Your contact is your end mill, your end mill makes contact with your base plate and boom, you've got a switch, there's a close connection. So any of these four pins, of course, four uh, GX16s could be utilized for anything you'd like. Mainly, you typically see, um, due to the fact that G540 has four available inputs, you could do all switches on those inputs. You could do all inputs on one of these. So you'll have three additional um, jacks for whatever you choose. Okay, so there's a lot of different variables here. I'm not going to discuss all that in this video, but rest assured, this chassis is virtually endless for those who want to get something that is completely updatable at later periods, even if they're not using everything. So again, we're using our three pin GX16 for switches. Two pins are allocated to the switch itself. Switches are included with this uh, actual chassis. You'll be receiving four snap switches. And how this works is your two connections, like I said, pin one, pin two is typically allocated to switch terminals. And then pin three will be allocated to your shield drain, which is your ground. So you're gonna need a ground bar. That's included with this chassis. Ground bar is toolless. You can see your nylon spacers there. This will mount inside the chassis, wherever you choose. And then of course you have your option of using a screw terminal mount or you'll use ring connectors. I will include ring connectors as well. So you'll have your option. I have guys that want to do it both ways. Um, dust covers are of course included because that's the proper way to do it. You close these. Now on this side, you can see here, we've got another GX16 three pin, but underneath, we've got a GX16 six pin. And the reason we have a GX16 six pin is because I get more requests on relay hookups and relay integration for a G540 system more than anything else. So what I did is I've included the toolless mounted relay you're gonna to require to manipulate your VFD on and off. Um, this relay will be wired dry contact. Now you'll see, I will uh, put a picture up somewhere in the video that you'll see the actual uh, wiring diagram. I'll also include that if you purchase the kit so you can see exactly how you're gonna wire in the relay. The relay only has two leads coming out of it. And a dry contact configuration of this relay means it is not supplying direct power to your accessory, which in which case would be your VFD. It's actually just closing a circuit, okay? So that being said, why do we have a six pin GX16? Well, the reason I did that is so that you can use a single cable, which will be included in the package as well, which is 20 gauge five lead double shielded. This again is, many of you guys are already familiar with my cable. I don't play games, best cable out. Um, you'll receive a 20 foot piece of this, and this will allow you to use one single connector to not only be able to cycle on your VFD, 
through Mach 3 with the G540, but also allow you the additional three pins to manipulate speed of your VFD for your spindle. So one cable to do two things with direct integration so you don't have to worry about adding um, another a port and having even more confusion. We want to keep it as simple as possible, that's the simplest way to do it. Now that being said, a six pin does take more time to solder because again, we're dealing with six pins. Now most of you out there are going, well there's two there and three connections required, uh, or excuse me, two connections required for the relay and three connections required for the VFD, that's only five. What's the extra pin available for? Let's see if you guys figure it out. It is the shield drain. So again, Got your shield drain hooked up. You got all your five leads in here. You got 20 gauge. You're set to go with that. It is double shielded. And that covers both the relay option. Once again, you will have the availability to use this with the G540 in a tooless fashion. You can see here the thumb nuts. So that you will be able to cycle on your VFD on and off and you're good to go with this formulation, once again, to manipulate speed. Now, I've said this to many of my previous clients just so everyone is aware. Just because you can manipulate speed through Mach 3 does not mean that the speed being represented in Mach 3 is 100% accurate. You can calibrate and calibrate and calibrate, but typically it's going to be off. I mean, most of the time it's off. If you have an encoder and incorporate an encoder, which is nothing more than a tachometer, that feature will make sure that your VFD registers accurate RPM in Mach 3. But just so everybody's on the same page, a lot of guys like the availability to manipulate uh, speed, so therefore that's why you're getting this option. Now, of course, and I'm going to state this probably uh, a couple times in the video, I can manipulate this combo package to feature whatever we need. If I have a guy doing a plasma system, his requirements are not necessarily going to be yours. If you're doing a specific retrofit, your requirements are not going to be naturally the general user. So again, very, very wide open package, millions of different options as far as how you want to go. That's why this is the master package. There's literally nothing with this kind of quality on the market as far as making it as simple. Um, and all using commercial grade uh, actual components. So you can see here, you got your dust covers here. You will be getting, once again, uh, all four of the GX16s on this side, the two GX16s here, all matching connectors. And these are your female connectors for your plugs to fabricate your actual uh, cables for this. Now cable is included. Once again, you're getting the 20 gauge five lead, once again, for our VFD connection, and that is double shielded. And you're also going to get 90 feet 90 feet of my double shielded 22.2. Now this stuff is amazing cable because it is super flexible and it is double shielded and 22 gauge is optimal for use with switches mainly because there's very low power and on top of that we want maximum flexibility where we can get into those tight crevices and corners and whatnot. So you will be set with all of your cable. Why are you getting 90 feet? So you can make 15 foot long cables. Now again, Everything is, is able to be modified. If you require more or less cable, let me know. We can adjust that. This package was put together to cover the majority of end users that want to do a DIY package themselves as far as incorporating labor and just do it to where they don't have to think everything is input in here at a commercial level to where, again, all the thought process, the engineering is done and everything is included. Uh, that being said, this is a V-negative power supply terminal splitter because you'll find that most power supplies, mine included, only have three negative terminals that are available. Why I'm including this, depending on your configuration, you should be using a cooling fan in any enclosure you use. I can also include that if you'd like, but I've left that option up to the end user as far as what they want to include. Uh, but this will allow you to split one of the V-negative uh, outputs on your power supply, you'd simply run a lead here and then you've just split it multiple times. This way we eliminate daisy chaining. And of course, you've got my classic thumb nuts, so you've got toolless mount for easy mounting, in and out mounting. So again, very, very simple package. Relay comes totally set up. All you'll have to do, you do have your silicone insulators. All of this is a solder package. When I say that, everything in here, in this enclosure, requires solder. So for my DIY guys, the reason you're going to be saving quite a bit of money, when I say quite a bit of money, just so everybody's on the same page, this system fully built with every option you see here, in terms of all of the wiring and everything all being done, you're looking at well over two, two grand. I mean, there's no way around it. The labor involved here is a lot, okay? But that's why you're saving money. 
So the guys that are okay building, again, you can see no corners have been cut. The tolerances are tight. Everything here is clean. So all you have to go in and do is do your soldering, you're done. Um, you already know your connections here. You're looking at three connections here, plus tinning. You know, you're doubling everything with your soldering. So just so everybody's aware, that's why you're saving money, you know. Um, I've had so many requests from my DIY guys that, you know, they wanted a chassis that could expand. I want to have the availability now. And when I want to hook everything up, I can. And you can see everything here has been done correctly. So, again, very simple platform, very complete. Um, I will put a link in the description to this unit. And again, if you guys are just getting involved, and I know a lot of guys are looking crossing over into CNC, don't be afraid to message me if you need a specific configuration. If you don't know a configuration, ask. Don't buy. Ask first. Um, so I'm hoping naturally all of you watch this video to the end. But again, just state it again, all of these ports can be modified. So if you need three GX16s all the way throughout, we can do that. If you needed multiple six pin or five pin GX16s, I can do that. So again, it's endless options for what you require. You can see nothing has been drilled inside the chassis and the main reason I didn't is because I don't know what power supply you plan on using. If you buy my power supply, I of course can uh, mount my power supply in there for you. So again, most of the work is done. I'd say about 80%. The wiring would be left up to you, but you have all of the same equipment that, again, a standard system would come with when it's all done. The big thing here is it's just unassembled. It's missing final assembly. So again, I hope the video has been helpful. I know that there's been a lot of chassis on the market um, and a lot of them don't really change much and that was the thing I was really looking at is I kept getting questions and I still get tons of questions on custom built units. This really mitigates all of the confusion as far as what's available, okay? This, this one unit will handle everything the G540 can handle. You know, as far as um, looking at space constraints, I get that question a lot. Where do I mount everything? The beauty is you can use spacers and standoffs to go overhead mounting. I've done that in previous videos. Really, this chassis is all you require for a G540. Now, if you had two G540s, that's a little bit different. Then you would need an overhead. You know, we go uh, a little bit higher up so we can accompany the second drive. I'm working on that as well. Um, but um, overall, for standard configuration for plasma, for more um, advanced type systems, this is all you'd ever require. So again, guys, I hope the video has been helpful. I hope that uh, if you guys have any questions, once again, please message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. Um, please re-review the listing as well if you're looking at this system, just so you make sure that you catch everything or watch the video again. I always recommend that. It's a lot of information to digest. But again, this is including all the components that I use and all of my pro systems that I sell for my clients. And I just wanted to make it simple so that you guys don't have to ask, hey, where do I get this? What do I do with that? You know, what do you recommend for this? What do you recommend for that? All the work has been done engineering-wise. Now it's a question of just your ability to solder and mount. That's basically it. So again, guys, uh, to all my subscribers, of course, I love you guys. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. I know things have been crazy this year. I'm trying to prepare for Christmas. Um, if you guys, of course, once again, do re require any type of quotes or questions, please message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com, or you can contact me direct through my eBay store. I'll put that link um, on the screen somewhere, and you guys will be all set. Thank you. Take care.